the singers ever sing on the sound system live like they did later on? The DJs were, were the ones who was toast and them never really have melody. Because you know, long time DJ never, unfortunately, they never really have no good song. They was just some toasters. It's you where I kind of bring something story like to the thing. Because a long time they had the say, automatic pistol, remote control, then it's the minister mature, so that don't make no sense. You know? Yeah, well, they bought them just a toast by the mic and they would have more to play the song and say some chicka pow, chicka pow, or some little thing in between. You know, and then when they realize they can make a version. Because I come from the days when it was two track, you ever hear some long time dub and you go hear singing in the background. It's like when you're in the band room and them recording, the bike from the drum and thing would pick up the vocals. But you just kind of sing low for the band to record your the music, then you would get the mic to do the, you know, them set up the mic afterward. One mic and everybody if it's a group after singing and balance and you have to sing into one mic. It's not like now, you can do different tracks, right? So in that time now, them realize that if you play the rhythm by itself, then the, the man who toast and could have a, so you know? So it, it come from that. That even Curtis Blow from America says, you are I'm listening to, and I'm going to hip hop thing. Yeah. So we influence hip hop, reggae music. Hey, as the successful songs, during that time you said you did five songs? Yeah, um, well actually, no, not any hits or anything, but I, when I went to studio one first and did, like in 1967, we did three songs first, and I went back and did two songs. When we did that, those two songs, Coxon used a rhythm that my song made and gave Bob Andy to do a tune called Desperate Lover. So that's your original? My original rhythm. So who made the, who made the rhythm up? They made the rhythm off my song. Yeah. And then Coxon gave Bavani the rhythm and he wrote, How do you feel when your baby is gone? Yeah. You know? But the rhythm was made for my song. Yeah. And, and he didn't release my song until 2000 and something I did from 1968. So I was listening to idea like today, I was listening to radio and I hear this guy saying, Fred Locks did a version to a Bavani song. I had to call the radio station and I said, No, it's the next way around. Yeah. Right? So, you know, that was like, he, uh, when I talked to Cox and I asked him, well, I'm saying, well Bob, Bob, Bob Andy was more marketable and he needed that hit at the time. I would come with a good rhythm. So, you know, we was harder. We were some little youth coming up, you know. How did you build that rhythm, though? You made it with the musician, you had the melody? No, I, I sing it. I, I, I made song and sing. Like, my song was, um, Never let a woman put you down, down on your face. That's your song? Yeah. Yeah, and my brother was a guitarist. So I, took, I went to the studio with him and him play, and then the band man them find out what he was playing. And play the thing. I, I was I was making poems. I was making songs. Yeah. But nowadays I can apply. If you give me a rhythm, I can make a song in a minute too. You know. You know what I'm saying because you have to learn to adapt. Hold on. The lyrics did do that song. Right? Yes, man. That's your song. That's my song. I, I wrote those that, song. Yeah. yeah. But after Bob and the one came out and then bring out that it start get like a popular now. And it's, it's, um, Cox and brought out some of our songs afterwards and some other um, things like um, Rocksteady 67, then he changed the name to From Scat to Reggae, and had a song called You Made Me Sore. You don't do me like you used to do. You know? Yeah. Open song. Well, I was a youth, I'm um, 17, 18, you know? Well, Cox was saying, yeah, you have a Bob Andy before and you have these people before. And they were, what, what Bob Andy's job at Studio One was like, Cox was uh, encouraging him to pirate people. <laughs> and I'm telling you, what he was doing is every time you come there as a new artist and, and you sing a song, Cox would give him the rhythm to write. Yeah. But if Cox think you was good enough to make a record your song still, but if you have somebody more popular that he put on the record, because not now, just now people singing songs and rhythm, I realized from a long time, Bob Andy was very great at that. He wrote a lot of songs for Delroy Lee. Wilson, Leroy Simmons. He wrote songs for all of them. I heard Bunny Lee talk about that, like, say you come in and record the song, yeah. then after you leave, you just get the same song to record for the next person. And just yeah, um, the, I, I, um, this is something that don't quote me, but I'm on TV. But anyhow, <laughs> them said that the song that Johnny Clark sing, None shall escape the judgment in this time. Is um, a youth named Earl Zero, yeah. was the original writer, and when he came to the studio and sing him song, um, as I'm gone, uh, Bonnie Lee said, Bonnie Lee has uh, said he's a pirate of all pirates, so I'm sure be talking. Because yeah. I was in studio at Channel One when Bonnie Lee bring um, Johnny Clark to do a Burning Spear song. Ice Green and Gold is the Rainbow, before Burning Spear song was released. Yeah. But, but when him named the um, Arsmouth while he's played on Burning Spear, and when he recognized the song, he said, I'm not playing on it. Yeah. And, and, and Bonnie Lee said, you can't go on with the politics, he's a pirate of all pirates. 
And Johnny Clark can sing better than Winston Rod. Before he just come work and, and make your money. So you better get the next drummer, you know. <laughs> and you just leave. All right, Even when I did Black Star Liner, right? Yeah. By my, oh, my first. When I did Black Star Liner, I went to Tubby's studio one day and said, Tubby's was recording Junior Biles with my same rhythm. He brought down the voice because he was a genius. He had a version of my song and he was bringing down the voice to make um, Junior Biles' voice. Black Star Liner over. He would even pay somebody to do over the rhythm. He was using the very same rhythm. And just out of the blue, we came in the studio. And my producer said, Yo, I want that to go on inside there. We'll go inside and see Junior Biles. I said, Don't record my song. And some bad man from the area see me as a little red boy. And I said, Oh, yeah, bad up the place, son. And I talk of your face, so. And I said, My song that you want pirate already, you know. And it just come out. And the same man, them turn against um, Tubbies and Junior. You know, and so what the rest of you would sing? Oh, not do them things there. So, yeah, do that. How could you protect your song back then? Because once you recorded for him, it was just like, yeah, the way you see what you did. Well, um, actually, my song was a hit song because we, we happened to find Junior by it before him could have do that. And maybe I'm going to sell it on the world or just maybe, whatever. But when I did Black Star in the first three months, it sold 15,000 copies. You know, and it was on the charts and everything. It was like a song that came the right time. Well, let me hear you say, my.